We welcome in our co-hosts on this Thursday morning, May 30th, the penultimate day of the month of May. New York Times best-selling author, John Gilstrap. Johnny. Good morning. I'm very proud of you, penultimate. That great word. Yeah, you don't yeah. get a chance to use that word too often. No, you don't. You don't. So congratulations. I, I, thought, I, I, I thought you might like yeah, that I word. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, you I, did that for me, didn't you? I did. You're a words guy. <laughs> yeah. It's the little things, John. It is. You know, it's not necessarily the grand gestures. But the little gifts in life. It is. Right? And you, you're, you're such a giving guy. You're, that was, I appreciate it. brings a tear to my eye. Yeah. That's what I do to people. I make them cry. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as well as you did in that debate back in high school, but still. Yeah. yeah. Let's welcome also in Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney, but he's here in a civilian sense today because he has no jurisdiction when he crosses that county line. Matt Harvey, good morning, Matt. What'd you say? Exactly. Can't hear you. John's shirt's too loud. No. <laughs> oh, but um bum that's, that joke never gets old. You like his shirt? I love it. It's that I time love, of year. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah. It's one of the great parts of the summer is the Gilstrap shirt collection. <laughs> this is yeah. one of the drab ones. Were you around last summer when he was? Uh, he's got a closet full of those. Yes. Yeah, I was. Right? Um, Let the record show, Rob is I, not but actually I've been in to, my closet. <laughs> I had to do a lot of therapy to kind of. <laughs> suppress that those yeah. those memories but yeah no now that you mention it it's a good dichotomy in haberdashery here this morning with listen the, to you with the words i had a couple of days off my brain is refreshed <laughs> <laughs> with we, you got the well buttoned up mr harvey you got the relaxed jimmy buffett chill john mm -hmm. gilstrap over here i'm compromising with the You're polo kind of the, the I'm baby in the, bear, i'm in the middle right, just right right between right right so i think we've kind of wedged it out yeah well. we've got our lanes we're sticking yeah. to them that's what i'm going to do the rest of the day today stick in my lane speaking of sticking in your lanes it's in my imagination or have, over the last like three years since the pandemic has driving become a save your own life behind the wheel experience full contact else? competitive sport yes what the hell is going on out there it's insane yeah i particularly like when you're going down like 81 and there's the guy, there's nobody else on the road and there's the guy coming up behind you. He clearly is going to pass, Yeah, but he waits till he's like six inches off your bumper before he goes around and passes. Yeah. Like he's had, he's like a mile and a half of a free lane that he can be in the other lane right. to get past you. But he waits just until he's six inches off the bumper to pass. Yeah. And if you were in the left lane, you could understand it because yes. you're not supposed to be hanging out cruising in the left lane. But if you're like in the middle of the right lane and someone does that, you're like, what? Why? What's the purpose? I haven't noticed it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you've been too busy dealing with other stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I just. Yeah. No, not, not personally. I haven't noticed. You it. haven't noticed that people drive like this is the last day they're going to be on the earth and they don't care who they take out. That's not been your experience. No, I mean, do you do it, much it, interstate it, driving? Maybe yeah, that's the yeah, difference because I, I, I do. A ton. I do not not as much as you do. Clearly, yeah. Um, but you know, I go I go to Southern West Virginia often to visit family, and go back to see my parents, and then I travel for other obligations, work obligations. But um, no, but in my line of work, we do see a lot of the results of aggressive driving on the criminal side. Yeah. Um, so, but personally, I haven't noticed it. And I think every state thinks their neighboring state has horrible drivers. Right, like Ohio. You know, like here, everyone says Maryland drivers are the worst. And I obviously I have a Maryland tag, and but when I see, when I, I drive in, in two states every day, West Virginia and Maryland, and my description of West Virginia drivers is this: twenty miles an hour under the speed limit, or forty miles an hour over the speed limit, and it doesn't matter what the posted sign is. It could, it could be if it's 55. Why do you think so that is? I have no idea. But on on two lane roads, I, I go do a lot of the two lanes through West Virginia to get to Maryland. And on the two lane roads, if I'm behind somebody, they're either going like I'm rolling through Jefferson County. They're either going like 35 or like 65 through Jefferson County on on, uh, on like 230 or whatever. You're going from Shepherdstown down to uh, Hall Town and off to 340. I would say that the the 20 miles under are new are transplants and then the 40 over are the the old west virginians and then, I, that when, know the back roads when, when i get across the harper's ferry bridge into maryland if there's a person with a west virginia tag as soon as they hit 340 
the, and the speed limit there, I think, is I think 60 maybe. They're going like 90, not like 70 or not 80. If it's a West Virginia tag, they're going like 90 miles an hour down 340. I'm going to play my safety engineer card here. I really believe, and legislators, you're listening here, it's the slow drivers who cause the accidents. I'm one of the slow drivers, by the well, way. Well, to an I, extent, if you're going 90-something miles an hour, it's your fault on an accident. I, but if you're, if you're doing 20 miles an hour, if, if, if all of traffic is doing 80 and the speed limit is 55, and we'll say that everybody is violating the law, if you're the guy that's doing 55, you're obeying the speed limit, when everybody else is, is doing like 80 miles an hour, you're the problem. You're the one that is going to – you're the hazard. That so is, if you, so that, if you go to an ATM at two a.m. to get money out, it's your fault that you got mugged. No, I'm just saying that the hazard, that's the the cause of the traffic jams and, and and what everybody is doing to get around is the guy that's going slow. I, it I, doesn't I, mean that he's violating the I, law. I, I, I get he's your just, point, but, he, but you're, that you're, that is the source of the hazard. You're assigning responsibility to the person who's obeying Not the law. Not culpability. I, back in but, the day, but responsibility. Back in the day, I used to drive on 460. That, this was down in southern West Virginia, going to. I can't remember if I was going to school or work at that time, but I'd commute from Peterstown up to Bluefield or Princeton, yeah. and every morning I'd see this truck, this little small truck, just swerving all over, all over. And the first time I saw. It was a it was a woman driver, and the first time I got up beside her, I saw the woman. She was she you'd love her, John. She was reading a book. She had it on the steering wheel, <laughs> and this was this was back before cell phones, right? Uh -huh. That that you could actually you know read. But it's the same thing. But every and then I would see her every morning. And I was like, I would just wanted to pull her over and be like, "Ma'am, what is that book?" That's got to be the best it's book gotta, in the world. Got to be a good book. Hey, let's welcome in our first guest of the day here, David Anderson. He is a candidate for the at-large uh, city council seat. Two are open for our running. David, good morning. Good morning, Bob. How would you describe yourself as a driver, David? Pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> are you the guy going 55 when everybody else is going um, 80 around you? I'm like Matt Harvey. I'm going like 20 miles up <laughs> You got 20 <laughs> miles under the speed limit? Yeah. <laughs> All right. How you doing this morning, man? Good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what do you do for a living, David? Uh, I work at a bank, local bank. Yeah, I remember you were in a commercial for the bank. Oh. I remember seeing you in a commercial for it one time. How long have you been there? Um, my current bank, um, three years now. Three years? I work in Jefferson County. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what, what, do you, what do you do specifically at the bank? Um, senior and customer service representative. Okay, very good. Uh, did you grow up around here, David? Um, I'm from Winchester originally. Winchester? I moved here 23 years ago. 23 years? Okay, how come you moved to this area? I bought my house. Oh, yeah. You, and you live in the city, obviously. Uh -huh. What ward do you live in? Ward 4. Ward four. Who's the city? Who's the Ward 4 council person? Kimberly Nelson. Kimberly Nelson, right? And she's being challenged as, as, she, by David. as she runs uh, for re-election here. Uh, and you're running a, as an at-large okay. candidate. Yeah. You've run before, have you not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you run for before? At-large. At-large, just in the most recent election? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do you want to be a city councilman in Martinsburg, David? Well, I want to be a city councilman at-large because I believe that at-large candidate, you try to help all five wars and so i like i love the whole city so that's why i want to do at large and uh why do you what, what do you think I, I know when i read our facebook page when we have other candidates on you're always posting questions mm -hmm. about uh, asking when you know, when are we going to do this when are we going to do that so what are your goals if you get elected uh, my first top three is get the fire west side fire station built because i have this plan in my bookshelf at home that's on the shelf the whole time that it's been on the books for 20 some years I feel that's way past time we need West Side Fire Station because from downtown to all the way to Wise, it takes a while now, all the traffic. Mm -hmm. And then my second priority would be um, get the parks, more parks equally among all the five wards. And so I would like to get a basketball court and a playground for Lambert Park. For currently, anybody on the east side. You can't, there's no good uh, playgrounds for the little kids. Mm -hmm. And then the third will be sidewalks. Our sidewalk situation is pretty, not very good right now, especially with um, King and Frostcroft. We had a lot of workers go down Frostcroft to fast food and Walmart to work. Mm -hmm. And yet we literally walk in the street from, from um, almost um, Delaware Avenue to Frostcroft because mm -hmm. there's no sidewalk. Yeah, I've seen people with motorized wheelchairs uh, mm -hmm. going down streets uh, around the area, and that's mm -hmm. always frightening for me to have to see that because obviously those things aren't meant to take on uh, automobiles. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, those are your main priorities. Let's talk about the fire station first. What would have to happen to make that happen? Um, first, I would get a um, sit down with the fire chief and see what the most calls are and can get the land purchase and get a plan together. Hopefully, a plan is already together. And hopefully, in my term, there will be groundbreaking, then a ribbon cutting and New fire truck be coming out of there by my end of my first my fourth year. Okay, and in regards to sidewalks, how would you do that? Um, I would work with the um, with the state and the uh, city manager and our local delegation, which I have a good relationship already, um, and get a plan together with the the sidewalks that are missing are mainly with the state roads. All right, and. Uh, Mayor Knowles, when he was on yesterday, mentioned about the city taking over uh, some of the expenses of redoing some of the sidewalks in downtown Martinsburg as opposed to the shop owners who would currently have the financial responsibility to do that. Do you think that's a good idea? Is that something a city councilman uh, like you would vote for? Oh, um, yes, sir. I've been for a favor of that for several years now. Um, our neighborhood cities have taken over their sidewalks. They've done theirs two different ways. And so I would definitely be in favor of that. Currently, um, I've been walking. I, mean, I walk on dog every day. I have two dogs now, and you literally have to you walk down one block. Then you have to walk in somebody's yard because there's no sidewalk, and then you got no sidewalk for two more blocks, or there's not even. And sometimes you trip. So it's very dangerous for especially wheelchairs and walkers. Okay, and in regards to parks, uh, Kevin yesterday made mention of the fact that the city. Uh, doesn't run Parks and Rec. That's Parks and Rec is an independent board. Uh, certainly they take input and the city appoints people to the Parks and Rec board. But as a city councilman, how would you try to influence Parks and Rec to do the things you'd like them to do regarding the parks in the city? The only Parks and Rec board, I feel that this, we would need to have more input, um, especially with our members that we appoint. Um, then I would have... Um, our city manager meet with the park director more often, um, get more coordination because I feel like we need more maintenance with our parks. Mr. Gilstrap. So on your hold up your campaign sign, you've got it there. It's it's bulldog colors. There we go. <laughs> I, I love the bulldogs. So right at the very top of, of the list there, you've got affordable housing. So what is the balance between at the same time that we're trying to bring industry and, and, and people in to the city and we're trying like the interwoven mills project is I don't, fairly expensive housing and so w what's the balance between having uh bringing in pretty high income people in order to support the city and then also having affordable housing because I, aren't we sort of pushing the affordable housing out in order to get the the higher income people in um I believe so. I had a co-worker, my, old, my former branch, she literally had to move to Cleveland, Ohio, because she couldn't afford, and as a, even assistant manager at a local bank, um, get move out her parents' house to get an apartment, and she looked around. So I feel, feel that um, with my former housing is more like with our local housing authority. We don't coordinate with them as much as other cities have, and, we, and I would work with Senator um, capital management to get more um, forward housing dollars like other cities have in our state like Huntington and Charleston and we haven't since I've been here we haven't updated any of our um, um, forward housing apartments like Leland and the ones on Wilson Street and even our high rises we haven't, we haven't built any new ones so like the ones I, lo I love the um, Wilbur Mill apartments I walked by just, just recently um, but just the ones that people that um, I feel like the lower the ones that are struggling to make it, this, um, they can't afford those or they can get the first month and the last month rent. So if we can just work about from local housing authority, and maybe we can go from there. Mr. Harvey, David, uh, you said that you have lived in the city now twenty three years, twenty two, twenty three years. What how, what involvements have you had since you've moved to Martinsburg? Um, I'm very involved in my local church. I go to Mount Zion, United, United Methodist. 
on my corner. Um, I'm one that been appointed to the Shade Tree Commission for three terms now. Um, what are some of the things you're doing on that commission, by the way? I know um, you've talked to me about getting on the show regarding what you folks oh, are doing. Now's yeah. your chance, man. I'm, I'm vice chairman, so I guess I uh, organized our first city Earth Day celebration at North Meadow. We had 50 children plant six maples, um, two red buds, six rose bushes, and I work with our local delegation, and I got the governor to do a proclamation for North Meadow. That's awesome. Yeah. Are yeah. you getting rid of the Bradford pears? Um, we don't allow to plant those anymore. Done the street, state, city pre trees. So, eventually, when um, um, our city has a goal to um, remove those on King, Queen, and Rays, and um, do a whole new street concept. Oh, they, they, That's an invasive species. They are, and they mm -hmm. they smell terrible when they bloom. When they out. bloom, yeah. I, I had one in my. It was either Bradford or Cleveland. I can't remember which. But when my home was built in two thousand, they put one of those in the front yard, and man, when those bloom, they're oof. They're pretty. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the blooms are very bright and yeah. they're full, but they're very top heavy though. When the wind blows yeah, hard, they, they just give up. <laughs> they and, they don't uh, fight the wind very well. Yeah, give up. Yeah, that's great that that they're that the city's recognizes that because I I used to work yeah. downtown. I had an office downtown, and and I could I was like, oh, it must be spring. <laughs> David, what do you think that the city of Martinsburg does well right now? Oh, uh, uh, we do well with our public works department. Jet Wilkinson, he is one of the best departments. Great dude. Um, if you need anything, they come right out. Um, it's very clean. I walk my dog. Like, when we when the cities, um, when it's cleanest cities around. Um, so, and just our staff is so f friendly and helpful. And what do you think the city could do better? Um, communication among the citizens. Um, with like updates and like billing. Like I mentioned somebody um, asked Corey the other day about um, the stormwater bill. I believe that should be all one bill with our water and fire fee in August. Instead of having four bills, we could have one bill and save money that way. We spent we spent all this money during four billings. We could have one bill and, and be done with it. Do it better that way. Okay, I got you. Mr. Gilstrap. The... the the Main Street Martinsburg push that has happened has done, a, 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 I think, has done a lot of good for the, for Main Street Martinsburg. Uh, what do we do about filling up the those those buildings? I guess it's on King Street. Those old historic buildings. The I, what is what was the the big tall one with the with the turrets and and. The, the parapets at the top. The post office? Old post office? Is that the old post office? Mm -hmm. uh, what would be your plan for that? And how do we go about bringing uh, that? Does Diego Lasada own that right now? Yes. Someone, I think it was mentioned. Was it yesterday yes. was, he purchased it? Yeah, oh, that's, okay. that's what was said yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is a plan in place to do uh, Yeah, it? it's uh, am, ambiguous right now if he's actually, um, as far as I know, made plans. But I could text him and ask him if he has long-term plans set yet. What would you like to see that be, David? Mm, it's been so things over the years. It was, used to be the art center, but it's a beautiful building. It's so big inside. It'd be beautiful like condos and the upper levels. It'd be nice because it's beautiful windows. Mm -hmm. And it's right there for um, people who work downtown. And, mm -hmm. There's one suggestion that Bill Whittington has, which is shut down Queen Street and reroute traffic. It can be done. There are some small towns that do that. They shut off one block, and it just it's a, it's a walking district. A pedestrian mall? So, yeah, basically, and, and that's what it is. Uh, I understand with Queen Street that's a little different because I think that's a state route, uh, so it, it's a bit more complex or complicated. But what do you think about that idea, David? Mm. Yeah, Winchester has that. I grew up in Winchester. It would take a lot of work and coordination. Mm -hmm. and it's a lot really expensive. So uh, have you been to Lambert Park since it reopened in the pool and whatever? Um, not to the pool, but I, I drive by there, by there all the time, check it out and stuff. Yeah, what do you think about the whole reopening of it and the availability of the pool? Oh, oh I'm, I'm glad it's reopened. It, it should be it should have been fixed by, uh, by now. And I think the have a long-range plan would be a lot better. Like, um, there's There's been talk in regards to the city and the 1% sales tax. The counties would like to get that as well. Uh, what do you think about the, the city's taxing process right now with the B&O tax, the one cent sales tax? Would you um, keep those in place? Uh, I believe the 1% sales tax uh, 
has helped us a lot. Uh, in what ways? All the projects we have done before that, it took us, we didn't have got any projects, projects finished. Like the tunnel is mm -hmm. really finished now. Um, the streetscape on Martin Street got finished. So the one percent sales tax really helped us in many ways. And a lot of people from out of town, travelers pay it. Um, so I feel like that my one percent tax on my sweet tea is worth it. <laughs> one percent tax on my sweet tea is worth it. That might be a campaign. Is that, slogan, is that Chick fil A sweet tea? Uh, yeah, I like sweet tea. I like Chick fil A. Who does it, man? <laughs> Chick fil A. Where, uh, where else do you get sweet tea? McDonald's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think about <clears throat> Does Martinsburg have a parking problem? Um, people, I've been mentioning it all week. Um, I don't think so. Um, I never have an issue. Like people said, they don't go to the library because it's a parking issue. I've been going to the library my whole, since I've been here, and I, I even go to DC sometimes, and you have to walk like four blocks to go where you want to go. And Winchester has, you can walk, you walk the whole walking mall to go to the store. So I don't think we have a parking problem. And parking garage, I know as mentioned, um, until we get like a um, um, stadium like Hagerstown just have, a parking garage would be a very expensive project. And I w my push priority would, priority would be a, a West Fire Station built first. Emergency services should go before parking and parks, definitely. Parking would be, be my only. Do we have evidence, emergency services are near, near and dear to my heart, do we have evidence that we have too long response times and is there an issue? The, the fire station keeps coming up, so mm -hmm. this is the first I'm hearing of that as a priority. Well, as um, we build more houses out, especially Martin Street Station, every weekend I, there's another at least two streets finished. So we got, and they're building another section in the gallery. More stores be going out by the wires and it's traffic. I th and police departments down by Rome, by Way Street. I think it's take, it takes a while to get out there. It'd be the response time be better. Mm -hmm. David, thank you for calling that supermarket the appropriate name of Wise. It's not Weese. It's oh. not We Is. <laughs> it's Wise. Wise. I got into that with Hornby yesterday. Uh -huh. He insists on calling it Weese. I I would actually call it Weiss. I, I do the hard S at yeah. the end. But they but they say it with a Z when when wise. when they right. voice their own. Who's ad. they? Okay. Wise. The people who the, own the, the place. The, yeah. Well, what are they? Is, now? is it is it a, like a German pronunciation? They're marketing people. When they do their ads, well, say German would be vice, vice, yeah. vice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call them now and tell them how wrong they are. Uh, David, about a minute left. Tell everybody why they should vote for you for one of the at-large council seats. Four running, two shall win. Um, please vote for me. Um, I want to continue the hard work as Harry and Corey has on this seat. Um, I'm very hardworking. I got good relationship with our city manager, our mayor, our police chief, and. Um, I know the city very well, and I definitely won't let you down. I, the top three priorities, it would be finished my fourth, my, in my first term. And, uh, and David, is there anything else that you wanted to make sure you got uh, to mention that we didn't get a chance to cover for your campaign or what you want to do? Uh, anything we left out? No, sir. All right. In that case, how'd you do? Were you nervous? A little bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we don't bite, so we're, it's, it was all good. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. You want to hold up your sign one more time? Mm -hmm. And um, one more last thing. Do yeah. Bulldogs baseball game day at 4.30. Yeah, they got to win two to win the state championship. Uh, one today, one tomorrow.